again, theologically, you have these long discussions about what does it mean to say that God has a throne? And what does it mean to say that God mounts the throne? Mas'alat al-istiwa, as they call it. And that to imagine that there is a throne that resembles anything like human thrones, or that God mounts in any way that resembles the way people mount something, is unbecoming of divinity. Um, but then, what do these expressions mean? And does God use language that in order to bring things closer to the human mind, but in reality cannot be understood in human terms. For, I mean, there's no point in going through, the, because these debates, have, you know, either you have to be a specialist in theology or you, you have to be interested in sort of medieval philosophical ideas. But it, the gist of it is that Allah's throne is like no other throne. And when Allah mounts the throne, it is a metaphor for Allah now has, has taken charge or Allah is is involved intimately managing Allah's creation. This, of course, goes back to what we've talked about before, the medieval idea of the disinterested deity, which was very popular um, in pre-modern times, that there are gods who could create and forget, or gods who create and abandon lose interest at some point or another. And that the Quran consistently places itself in the opposite camp, that it, this is not a God that creates and abandons, or a God that creates and forgets, um, or a God that creates and becomes distracted, as many of the mythologies religious mythologies of pre-modern pre times would hold.